This is a master loss sector while 30 under the recommended power level and I can run around like a god melting everything in my path with this new warlock solo 3.0 build. Now the only thing harder than this is a grandmaster nightfall but remember that I am 30 under the recommended power in this activity so adds will kill you pretty quickly but this build is really effective and really good especially for those starting out new season on a warlock where you aren't really a high level and don't have any artifact mods. Now this build can actually be even better with the classy restoration artifact mod this season but this just proves that you don't need that mod to become a god. I mean, sure, it makes you an immortal god, but it's not required because the way we have this build set up, you'll have so many buffs active at once. I mean, it's kind of funny. Although saying that, when I unlock that mod, I will be slotting it on. Now this video is sponsored by USMMO. They offer cheaper Destiny 2 Silver, so if that's something that you're interested in, you can find them down below along with my discount code. And now guys, kicking off the third build to the series, are you awesome warlocks? Light the flame, place that sword to the ground, and let's ignite the world. Okay, now firstly before we get straight into the video, I just want to mention that there is a new playlist down below if you want to check out some of the other builds for this season, as I will be adding more into there as time goes on. And we're going to have some really fun and really good builds for all subclasses, so stay tuned for more. But with this one, we are going to be running around literally like a god, just killing everything. And it doesn't matter if you're in a regular activity or you're in a master game mode, because it really doesn't make a difference. And as I said earlier, if you use the classy restoration with this build, it's honestly like a portable Well of Radiance. I mean, you know what? I actually think it might be better than a Well of Radiance. Just use it. It's something I'll be using when I unlock it on mine. But for someone just starting a new season out, this build is definitely a good start. So the way you'll effectively use this build and going into our testing loss sector here on Nessus to show the example, you'll first put down your Rift. Then you'll throw a Fusion Grenade on an add to kill them. This will instantly recharge your Rift while spawning a Solar Elemental Well and chaining explosive damage nearby. Pick up that Well to get the healing effect and a solar weapon damage boost, then throw down another empowering rift and use your grenade again and repeat. If you don't have a grenade charge, get like 2-3 to three kills while standing in the rift to recharge it. As long as you have either a rift or a grenade up to chain between the two abilities, then you'll be perfectly fine. The melee ability is not my favourite, but it's okay. It's fun, but it wasn't perfect in endgame PvE, especially when you're massively under the recommended power level. Now the empowering rift will give you a 20% damage buff, and this stacks with Font of Might for another 25%, as well as any debuffs that you're going to be applying to enemies. So you can really output some crazy DPS with this build, and we have this set up pretty good so you don't have to stress about the timers, as you will be able to consistently keep these buffs with almost a 100% uptime. That is if you play it right, and by the way, you're going to get supers pretty damn fast as well. So firstly, I want to go through the loadout. Now ideally you want to use solar weapons, obviously because the font of might and it matching your subclass, but if you have to temporarily make slight changes, that is fine as well. Like for me, basing this on a master loss sector, I'll be using an arbalist for anti-barriers, scout rifle for the unstops, and a solar heavy weapon for DPS, although your grenades are also going to be good for damaging enemies as well. Your exotic choices are Ariana's Val, Prometheus Lens would be an interesting one to try out, Sunshot for more effective ad clearing, Galley for ad clearing and the DPS, as well as Sleeper. Monte Carlo, but only go with this if you're investing specifically into a melee build, although I wouldn't recommend it. But there is also the Fawn to spread poison, but if you're going to go with that, then you'll want to go with Necrotic Grip for the exotic armor. The other armors you can use are Sunbracers if using Solar Nades. You also have Verity's Brow and the Starfire Protocol, which is the one that we're going to be using with this build today, because this does give us an extra fusion grenade, and grenade kills will restore our own power and rift. And then kills while empowered in that rift will restore our grenades, so you can just loop between the two abilities, so it is just pretty much infinite solar abilities non-stop. Subclass we're going with Well of Radiance. This got nerfed big time, but it's not bad when you can get it pretty quickly. You will want an Empower and Rift with this though, that is required. Then I am using the Incinerator Snap Melee, pretty fun but feels a little weak. And then we have the Fusion Grenades. Aspects are Touch of Flame, make our Fusion Grenades stronger, Heat Rises, which will give us infinite melees while airborne. Then the fragments we have are Ember of Blistering, where defeating targets with Solar Ignitions grant grenade energy. Not required, so you can swap this one out if you want to, but it does help if you end up losing both your Rift and your grenade ability. Because without those abilities, you're going to be waiting quite a while for them to cool down and come back. Next we have Ember of Solace for the increased effects. You want to use this especially when you are going to be using the classy restoration mod, but we also have Ember of Ashes to apply more Scorch stacks to targets and then Ember of Eruption for solo ignitions to have an increased area of effect. 
So a pretty good base setup right there. Now quickly before we go over the mods, in terms of the stats you want to max out resilience to 100. This will give you a 40% damage reduction which is huge and this will save you a lot. Otherwise the next two stats you want to go for are intellect and recovery as you don't really need any ability cooldowns with this build. The artifact mods you can use are the overlook grenades, the ignition to champions when you stun them, flame harvesting, the increased damage and radius from ignitions and then the classy restoration. The actual mods we are using firstly in the helmet are elemental ordnance. This is to spawn a solar elemental well when we get kills with our fusion grenades because you will get a ton of kills with your grenades as we are an ability build and the whole point of this build is to spam fusion grenades and rifts so throw this mod on but with that I am using two ashes to assets for bonus super energy although if you're not bothered about getting supers faster then you can swap this out if you want to. In the gauntlets we have the front of might to grant our weapons, our solar weapons, a 25% bonus to weapon damage when we pick up solar wells. A really good mod to use with all types of different builds, so I strongly recommend you use this one. And then you can put on your champion mod or mods or anything you really prefer, so you do have a little extra freedom here with that. But for the chest, we have Well of Life. This is your alternative to classy restoration, so use this until you have that mod unlocked. Linear rifle reserves for our heavy weapon, although again, you can swap this one out if you want to and stick with some damage resist mods. But in in the legs we have another font of might and that's to keep the damage buff active for 16 seconds instead of 10 but this does require another mod to achieve that but also in the legs we are running a scavenger mod for our heavy weapon so with the class armor you want to run the elemental time dilation mod this is a stasis mod so you will need your armor element to be stasis but having this on will increase the time that mods give us time limited benefits so font of might and the world of life mods also in the class we are running this mod here but you can and should really run the classy restoration if you can as that will make this build like five times better and I mean it's not even funny how good it is. Now this build is probably one of the best warlock builds in the game to use right now for solo 3.0 especially if you're going to use the classy restoration and I know that warlocks got completely nerfed to the ground with void builds as well as the solar builds but as a solo 3.0 build this season it is in my opinion almost the best you're going to get if not the best so I do strongly recommend you pick up those mods from Ada 1 if you haven't yet so keep checking back as I do make PSA videos for the important things to look out for so stay tuned on the channel for those as well but guys you really gotta try this build out I promise you'll love it and I mean I'm not even a warlock main and I like this build better than my titan solar build but let me know below if you're going to use this build or what builds you are going to use because I'd love to hear. But guys that about wraps up this video for the new Warlock solo build for the Solo 3.0 subclass update in Destiny 2 Witch Queen Season of the Haunted. Next as always be sure to check out the playlist below for more top fun and insane builds this season for 2022 because I will be making new builds here on the channel every week. So stay tuned for those and whatever you guys get up to have a good one and I'll see you all in the next video.